Welcome to Retire with Purpose, a show specifically designed to help you maximize your financial confidence in retirement. Casey Weed is the CEO and Chief Visionary of Howard Bailey Financial, a certified financial planner and Wall Street Journal bestselling author. He's your host on Retire with Purpose. Hey, I'm Casey Weed, and we believe in retirement strategies that are driven by meaning and purpose. Join us this week and every week as we discuss planning for your best retirement, pinpointing your purpose, building a rock solid financial plan, and unpacking trending topics that could impact your financial future. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Retire with Purpose, the science of retiring with confidence, the art of living with purpose. This is your host, Casey Weed, joining me as he does every week, my good friend and co-host, Marshall Johnson, here with me. Hey, hey. And we are here to discuss retirement with you. So if you're at retirement, in retirement, near retirement, or you're just seeking that coveted job optional status, you've found yourself a home. We're going to have a wide-ranging discussion today talking about everything from how to minimize your taxes on real estate, those capital gains taxes that are so dreaded from you real estate investors. We're also going to talk about how much income your 401k will produce in retirement. We have some really special guests coming on the show where we're going to be giving away all kinds of books and giveaways. So stick around later for that. We've got Mitch Anthony, Jan Freed, Chris Smith, and more. Uh, We're also going to be hitting on a question from Teresa, where she asks, what sort of retirement planning should I do if I never plan on retiring? That'll be an interesting one for Marshall to answer himself. But off the top here, we're going to be covering an article from our weekend reading for retirees email series. That is an email that goes out every single Friday from Marshall and my Self, where we sum up articles as well as offer our insights on those articles on trending topics in the retirement planning space. Could be on everything from estate planning, tax planning, the latest in retirement income strategies, and so much more. You can sign up at retirewithpurpose.com. We're going to be spotlighting an article here with you on the show. That's actually, uh, it's my article, and it came from <laughs> Entrepreneur. So it's, this was recently published in Entrepreneur, and it is titled A Modern Retirement Mindset, Elevate Meaning and Purpose by Becoming Job Optional. Uh, we wanted to share this article with you uh, because I just, I think it's important. Yeah, well, uh, we like to call it job optional. Uh, becoming job optional, right? Now, this is a great, great article, and I think it sums up pretty well kind of what we do here at, uh, at Howard Bailey and the process that we use when we're walking clients through this job optional process. Yeah, you know, our industry is still way back in the past, right? We haven't really evolved as an industry, industry wide, you know, as financial planners and financial advisors, especially retirement planners for decades. And it's time to shift the way that we plan for retirement, the way that we think about retirement, no longer are individuals saving as much as they can. They hit 65 and then they just put everything on autopilot. Mm -hmm. Don't look at their plan again and just ride off into the sunset. Retirement's so much longer today. Well, in financial planning in general, you know, it it never used to be a thing because people worked for 30, 40 years in in a farm or a factory and they had a pension and lived off the land and you didn't, you didn't need a financial plan. Well, I think there's this huge movement today uh, that we're seeing with younger individuals where they're not seeking retirement. Uh, They call it the fire movement quite often, you know, financial independence, retire early. But if you really do your research around the fire movement, it's really the job optional movement as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. (laughs) It's, it's these individuals that are looking for purpose early in life through the leverage of their financial well being. So they've worked really hard to save as much as they can in control their financial life and minimize their risks so that they could focus on the things that they want to do the most. It doesn't mean that they're actually going to retire and no longer create income. They just want financial independence. Once you reach financial independence, you can continue to work. If you want to continue to work, you can step back. You could do volunteer work. You look for those areas where you can make the biggest impact in the lives of others. And if we're still wrapped up in what's next, what's next in Washington, what's next in the stock market, if you're still worried about your money, if you still have concerns about your finances, if you don't know that you could retire at any time that you mm-hmm. want, if you didn't know that you could just step back and you actually didn't need the income every single year, then that really blinds you from what's happening today, where life is actually happening right now. You're either living in the future, you're living in the past, 
you're not being present. And if we can just be more present, then we can focus on those areas that we're really good at, that bring us a lot of energy and add even more value into the world. So that's what job optional is, right? It's elevating the meaning and purpose in your life through your finances by becoming financially free so that you can do the things that you want to do. And for some, that is continuing to work in their job, but you want that confidence to know that you could retire if you want to retire. And over the years, as I've helped individuals get to this point of becoming job optional, sometimes they come in and say, hey, I want to retire. And say, do you really? Right. Well, let's put together this plan so you could retire at any point that you want. And then what we quite often find is they continue working once they know they no longer have to do it because they do get a sense of meaning and purpose out of their work, out of their job. They're just distracted by all the noise. Well, and sometimes that stress too, that stress of not knowing, am I there? Am I comfortable? Am I doing everything I should? And once you figure out, hey, yeah, you are, you're good. You, if you put these, uh, you know, as you as you talk about in this article, you have this framework and you go through the framework and understand that you've got all your ducks in a row, then that gives you the confidence to go, well, hey, it's a lot less stressful now uh, knowing that I could walk away at any time. Yeah, and and for me, you know, I didn't realize that the, this framework, it's all designed about what I was actually doing in my own financial life mm-hmm. and not really recognizing that I was using a framework. Sure. You know, I got to this point where I was financially free and I said, well, how did I get here? Let's actually trace back the steps and see if there's a framework that's been created in my financial life that we can actually apply to the families that we work with in a form that they would understand, right? Something that's easy to understand, provides you the big picture and the confidence to know that you can focus on those more meaningful areas of life. And what I found, what I realized was that I had created a plan that was focused on five areas. And it started one with defining purpose. So when you come in to visit with our team, the first thing we want you to do is go through our purpose webinar that we did with Chris Smith, where we walk you through about 45 minutes of discussing your values, your mission, your vision of the future. And we'll take that vision, that mission, what's important to you. And that leads us to crafting the financial life plan that is most appropriate for you. Mm -hmm. Too many advisors want you to fill out this questionnaire online or you hop on an, an online service and you punch in your numbers and it says, hey, here's your plan. However, that plan is not driven by meaning and purpose. That plan is stocked to every single person that goes to that site or goes to that advisor. Your plan is structured around your life. It's supposed to support your life. So it's not if it's not customized to you, then is it going to actually create meaning in your life on the back end or could it be a detriment? You know, I recently spoke with um, Uh, Dr. George Schofield, again, for the podcast, one of our most popular guests we've had on the podcast time and time again, he met with two financial advisors back in 2013. And he said he sat down with both of them, had lunch with them. And they said, hey, we want to put together a retirement plan for you. He said, yeah, but I don't want to retire. And I said, yeah, but you need a retirement plan. Well, I don't need a traditional retirement plan because I don't actually plan on retiring. I want financial freedom, but they couldn't get to that point of understanding how his unique purpose in life needed to drive that financial plan. Yeah, it makes it makes a big difference. And you you talked about that though. Retirement is not for everybody. And so for George, you know, he he's got other dreams and concerns, but he's not going to retire in the traditional sense. Mm-hmm. But he's still going to face the same basic risks. You know, no matter what your purpose is, no matter where you find meaning in life, you're always going to face the same basic financial risk from a high level as the person that's down the street from you. Whether you have $500,000 or $50 million, we face some of the same basic risks. And these are the risks that I was addressing in my own financial life. And this is an acronym, the life plan, liquidity, income, flexibility, and estate. These are the things that we need in order to confidently focus on what means the most to us. Right. We need liquidity first for emergencies, for opportunities. Life's going to throw you uh, some some challenges and some curveballs, right? You got to have liquidity to be able to handle those. And it's not just liquidity for emergencies, it's liquidity for all of those things. I think far too often, I've written about this several times, I have an article published in Forbes where I talk about the problem with 
a good majority of financial advice out there, it is structured in such a way to get you to invest as much as you possibly can at all times, where it's saying liquidity is bad, cash is bad, right, you shouldn't right. have money sitting on the sidelines, you shouldn't have lazy money. And to a certain degree, that's true. Sure. However, I find that the happiest individuals aren't the ones with the largest brokerage accounts. Uh, they're not the ones with the largest real estate portfolio. Those are the ones that have the most amount of liquidity, the most amount of cash set aside to give them the confidence to know they're going to be okay no matter what happens next. Number two is income. So we get that liquidity established. Now we move on to income. We need to have income or we don't have retirement. Right. So we create an income strategy, a real income strategy to ensure that what you have today will provide the income you need to cover all of your expenses for the rest of your life. And if we've done those two things, you've got liquidity, you have your income. Well, life's going to change. You know, life's going to evolve. This is why this is a framework, too. It's not just a plan you put together today and say, hey, everything's okay. Life's going to change. Three years, four years, five years, ten years from now, your goals are going to shape, you change, your, your mission's going to change in life, and we need flexibility to do that. And for some, that might be inflation, right? You have inflation risk, and that means you need more, more income. We need to have some assets set aside to be flexible, to provide more income, or to provide you the ability to move somewhere else to adapt over time. If we have the liquidity taken care of, we have the income to last the rest of our life, we have more flexibility than we need, then it's everything that's left behind, right? That's our estate plan. Mm -hmm. Your will, your power of attorney, uh, this is your health care directives, this is your health care strategy, your long-term care strategy, and also... There's some tax planning that has to go in there. Absolutely. There's actually tax planning that has to, to be weaved throughout this entire life plan. Uh, you're going to get hit with 1099s with your liquidity funds. Uh, you're going to have distributions from your IRAs and your income bucket. Uh, you're going to have dividend income and your flexibility dollars. You might be faced with estate taxes when it comes to your estate plan. And so we're going to pay taxes throughout our entire life. And we need to make sure that we have a plan that weaves tax planning throughout that entire financial life plan. And if we do a good job with that, we get to elevate the meaning and purpose we get out of life. I discuss this extensively in my Wall Street Journal bestselling book, Job Optional. That book is all about the Retire With Purpose framework. However, it's so much more, and a good chunk of the book is devoted to purpose, along with specific strategies that you can implement in your financial life to take things to the next level, to maximize your financial efficiency, to eliminate those concerns and worries about money and finances altogether so you can focus on what means the most to you. And we want to get that copy in your hands today, right now. If you'd like to claim a free copy of my Wall Street Journal bestselling book, Job Optional, just give us a call or text 866-482-9559. 866-482-9559. Again, just call or text that number. Free book, 866-482-9559. We're going to come right back after the short break and answer questions from you. First-time callers are eligible to receive one in-stock book per request. Limit one book per week per household up to three books per calendar year. See full terms at howardbailey.com slash terms. You're listening to Retire With Purpose, hosted by Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. This is Retire With Purpose, hosted by Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. Welcome back to Retire With Purpose, the science of retiring with confidence, the art of living with purpose. This is your host, Casey Weed. Joining me, my good friend and co-host, Marshall Johnson, here with me. Hey. It is our time to turn the mic over to you and see what's on your mind. We receive questions throughout the week. So if you have questions, we have answers. All you need to do is go on over to retirewithpurpose.com. In the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, there's a little text box there. Just type your question in. That question will come directly to us. Uh, we will get you an answer to that question, no matter what. You know, our brand DNA here is that we know we can't work with everyone, but we absolutely can help everyone. That's one of the ways that we do so. So if you have anything that's keeping you up at night, you have questions about a conversation you recently had with your financial advisor or your neighbor, whatever is on your mind, whatever is keeping you 
you up. Just go there, submit your question, we'll get you an answer. And we will ask you if you'd like to be featured on the radio and television show. If you'd like to be featured, we will get a recording of you. We'll put it out there in the world uh, so you can get a little fame while you're at it. Again, just go to retirewithpurpose.com. We've got some questions today coming from Christopher, Teresa, Peter. We're going to kick it off the question from Christopher. And Christopher says this, is hiring an estate planner necessary? And are there any other professionals I should be looking at partnering with to make sure my estate is in order? Great, great question, Christopher. Uh, the, the, my answer to the, your first part of the question, uh, is hiring an estate planner necessary? I would argue it is. Um, you know, anytime we're dealing with the law, I think it's real important to make sure you're getting good counsel, um, and trying to understand what part of your situation uh, needs to be looked at. I, I think uh, there's a common misconception that, well, I'm not super wealthy, so I don't need any estate planning. And I think that's that's inaccurate. I think everybody should have some basic estate planning to make sure that uh, – things are not a burden when you're no longer here. Mm -hmm. and Mar I have a, a, a slightly different opinion on this than Marshall. I, I don't think that everyone needs to hire an estate planner, but everyone does need an estate plan. You know, for me, I didn't always have an estate planner. You know, when I was in my early 20s, I had a pretty simple financial life. You know, I had a, a small business and a retirement account, a life insurance policy, right? Um, maybe a Roth IRA and a simple IRA. I mean, it just wasn't that complex. We owned one home. It was pretty basic. We didn't have any kids. We just got married. So at the time, I didn't feel the need, nor did I have the money to go spend a couple thousand dollars with an estate planner. Instead, I hopped on LegalZoom. Now, you, there are risks in doing so. You know, you have to know a little bit in order to go that route. But hopping on LegalZoom, I was able to pick up some of those documents that I just knew I absolutely had to have, no matter how complex my financial life was. You need that will. You need that power of attorney. You need those medical directives. I mean, those basic documents that everyone needs, you could probably hop online and be perfectly fine knocking those out yourself for a fraction of the cost and making sure you have beneficiary designations on all of your assets or as much as you possibly can. And then the will can be that catch-all. However, as your life becomes more complex, as you add kids into the picture, mm -hmm. uh, as you add other businesses, real estate, other investments, LLCs, as you have your financial life get more complex, I think it goes the same as using TurboTax to prepare your tax return. I used TurboTax for you know several years when I first got into the working world because it was really just a W-2, right? I had my W-2 or my 1099. It was pretty straightforward. Again, as you add in other business entities and a lot of different forms of taxation, then it makes sense to hire a CPA. I think when you get into retirement, everyone's tax life becomes more complicated. And if you have enough to retire, then your financial life has become more complex as well. So your estate plan becomes more complex. I like to see everyone that we're working with in retirement, they should have an estate planner, someone they meet with every couple of years to update their estate plan. Uh, they should have a CPA, someone that not only they can rely on, but we can rely on as well. Someone we have a good relationship with, where we can pick up the phone and say, hey, this is the plan this year. Anything you see on your side that we need to make any changes. We have the ability to have those round table meetings. And so do you need to hire an estate planner? You know, not necessarily. I don't know your financial situation, Chris, uh, but you do absolutely need an estate plan. And as far as other professionals, I think I said it there, right? You, you need a CPA. You need an estate planning attorney. If you need one, you need the other, in my opinion. And everyone should have a quarterback. You've got some players on the field. Uh, you have your CPA. You have your estate planning attorney. Then you need a quarterback to, to pull these different people together. That's your certified financial planner practitioner, right? We act as our client's quarterback where we interact with that estate planning attorney and CPA and kind of manage those relationships. Now, are we the coach? We're not the coach, right? The client's the coach. The client's going to tell us, this is what I want to see happen this game, this year, over the next 10 years. And then we're making those on the field calls and coordinating amongst the players. Yeah, I think that's a great way to sum it up. So absolutely, everybody needs an estate plan, but maybe not an estate planner. Ooh, Marshall's coming to my side. Next up, we got Teresa. Teresa says, what sort of retirement planning should I do if I never plan on retiring? Well, hey, she should have listened to the first segment, right? Yeah, I and mean, you need to go pick up my book, Job Optional, because what you need, I, I don't plan on retiring, 
right? I, but I, I have a job optional strategy. I've walked myself through the Retire With Purpose framework. That's the financial strategy that I have for myself. You need a strategy. It doesn't mean that you're going to kick out retirement income, but you need to have a strategy because I could be forced into retirement at any day. Teresa, you could be forced into retirement yeah, tomorrow. There's yeah. no guarantee that you're going to be able to continue to work for the next 10, 20, 30 years, or as long as you possibly want to re- work, there isn't a guarantee there. So I want to have, and you might change your opinion, right? You might decide three, four, five years from now, maybe something happens in your life. You go, you know what? I don't want to work anymore. I want to go do something else. Well, if you don't have a retirement plan, basically, if you don't have financial freedom, then you can't just pivot and go do something else with your life. You're greatly restricted by the need for that job that you have right now. You give up that freedom to adapt. And a lot of people experience that in 2020. You know, the coronavirus made a lot of individuals want to adapt, want to pivot, want to do other things. Mm -hmm. You know which businesses aren't around anymore? The ones that weren't able to pivot because they didn't have a good financial foundation. Yeah, I would add to that too. Even though you don't plan on retiring, uh, you still may be dealing with tax planning. So tax planning and retirement planning kind of go hand in hand and just making sure that even though you may never stop working, you still need a tax plan. Mm. And uh, especially with with somebody that's accumulated some wealth over the years, they're going to want to m- manage that to make sure you, you you cut Uncle Sam out as much as possible. Yeah, right? Teresa, if you'd like a copy of my book, Job Optional, just give us a call or text this number right now, 866-482-9559, 866-482-9559. Anyone that it's looking for a job optional strategy rather than retirement strategy, just call us or text us right now, 866-482-9559. Our next question comes from Peter, and old Pete says, I moved from one home to another about three and a half years ago and kept the previous home as a rental. However, I'm concerned about the capital gains tax when I do sell it. Are there fewer tax implications selling it sooner compared to 10, 20 years from now, or am I subject to the same capital gains regardless of how long I own it. Wow, Peter, great question. There's a lot to unpack in that uh, little question of yours. Uh, You know, isn't it amazing how things change? I mean, I can remember back in 08 during the financial crisis when it wasn't so much uh, worried about paying capital gains tax on, on your real estate. People had tremendous losses in their real estate. So Mm. how the tides have turned over the last Mm. 10 years or so, but um, you know, I I always go back to one simple phrase that stuck with me for a long time. When we're contemplating selling something for a gain, let's not forget that you you made money. This is a good thing, right? Don't let the tax tail wag the dog. I mean, we could could throw out projections about where we think uh, capital gains rates are going to go, and a lot of people assume they're going to go up. Uh, in the future, but nobody knows. So it's really hard to say where capital gains rates are going to be in 10 months, let alone 10 years or 20 years. All I can say is you have a pretty good deal right now, right? You have a pretty good deal right now if you want to lock in capital gains at a 0, 15, 20% tax. That's pretty good for most individuals. Uh, But to lean into what Marshall said there, don't let the tax tail wag the dog. If you have a $100,000 rental that's kicking out $50,000 in income every year, Don't let that tax tail wag the dog. Yeah. Don't sell it, right? I don't care what the the, right. the future of taxes are. You've got a great investment. And so be careful when you're putting putting taxes before investing. You really have to balance these two things. Now, there are some things to do. There are some opportunities you, you might have to reduce your taxes on your rental real estate uh, or at least manage those things. Uh, one of those could be tax loss harvesting, which we've helped families with before. You yeah. come in, maybe you have a, an old stock that just hasn't performed that well, an old mutual fund that hasn't done real well. Maybe you have some other assets or investments where we can generate some losses to net those out with your capital gains. So we can net those capital losses out with your capital gains, reduce the net uh, impact. Uh, We can also do a 1031 exchange. So you exchange, you sell that property. Now, when you sell that property, you got a short period of time. So you need to replace it with a like-kind property. So if you're selling a single-family rental, you need to get another single-family rental, and you have 45 days from yeah, 45, 45 days to identify that property of 180 right, right. days to close on that property. So it's a tight window. And we have had panic calls in the past where someone hasn't done proper planning and now they need help right away figuring out how they're going to be able to defer or manage that tax situation. So plan ahead. I think one of the simplest strategies, and it might work for you, Peter, is to think about the 
principal residence or their primary residence exclusion. Oh, so, so just move back into the house. Right? Yeah. <laughs> if you sell your primary residence, you can exclude up to 250000 500000 if you're a married couple. If you're filing a joint return, you can exclude up to a $500,000 gain. Now, you need to live in that home and own that home for two out of the last five years. You have been in another home for three and a half, so maybe you've been renting it for three and a half years, and maybe you've had it for a year and a half. You may only need to move back in for a year in order to qualify that rental property before you sell it as your primary residence. There's a risk there, though, and that is something called depreciation recapture. Ooh, yeah. If you've been depreciating that rental property, they can recapture that depreciation if you're treating it as your primary residence at that time. Peter, I would just recommend that you seek tax counsel. Don't just hop on Google. If I had your question, I'd be on the phone with my CPA and saying, hey, what's the best, best strategy? If I had a really complex real estate transaction, I'd be on the phone with my tax attorney saying, hey, what your recommendation. Always seek guidance. And that's what we're here to help you with. And that's why we're offering a complimentary financial review right now to you. If you're listening, you have the opportunity right now, if you give us a call to meet with an independent financial advisor on our team, either in person or through a video meeting from the comfort of your home, and we'll help you determine how prepared you are to handle retirement pitfalls like inflation, healthcare emergencies, stock market crashes, rising taxes, which we know are just around the corner. In short, We'll take the guesswork out of financial planning for you. It can take just 30 minutes, so give us a call right now, 866-482-9559. A comprehensive financial review with no obligation, 866-482-9559. You can call or text that number, 866-482-9559. Stick around, because up next, we have all kinds of awesome stuff to give away. First-time callers are eligible to receive one in-stock book per request. Limit one book per week per household up to three books per calendar year. See full terms at howardbailey.com slash terms. You're listening to Retire With Purpose, hosted by Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. This is Retire With Purpose, hosted by Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. Welcome back to Retire With Purpose, the science of retiring with confidence, the art of living with purpose. This is your host, Casey Weed. Joining me is my good friend, Marshall Johnson, here with me and a bunch of other special guests because today we are going to be spotlighting my favorite topic of discussion, and that is... Purpose. Purpose. There we go. I, I didn't know what you were going to say. <laughs> it's at the root of our proprietary planning process and the driving force of what ultimately creates a fulfilling retirement and just life in general. We've had the opportunity to feature several amazing experts on the podcast about the importance of purpose, not only in retirement, but as we said, life in general. So today we're looking back at some of our most popular episodes that truly take a deep dive into the non-financial aspects of retirement. We'll also be including some giveaways to go along with these Ooh. discussions and guests. So if you find the concept of purpose and meaning insightful, stick around to find out how to get some valuable tools that I believe will provide you with the guidance to live a fulfilling life. You can check out each one of these featured episodes at retirewithpurpose.com. Just click on the podcast tab. So let's get started with one of my favorites, oh, Chris yeah. Smith, not yeah. just one of my favorite episodes, but one of my favorite human beings, uh, Chris Smith, he's actually developed. So this is a side note. So Chris Smith has two boys. He actually has a bunch of kids. Okay. But he's got these two boys. <laughs> one's 12. Well, just turned 13. Another one's 11. They created a t-shirt company oh, yeah? called create or complain. It's just create or complain, right? And so we actually have purchased some shirts for our whole team that say create or complain from the kids and the kids who are, again, they're 13, 11 years old. They're going to be giving an almost an hour long presentation for our team about why we're adopting this as our firm's motto oh, that's for cool. the year. That's great. <laughs> and Marshall didn't know that until just oh, now. That's great. So if you want to go back and listen to Chris, who is all about creating purpose and meaning in life. He also runs a company called The Family Brand that I absolutely adore. He actually even created our 
Purpose webinar with us, which you can go to retirewithpurpose.com. You can watch the full length webinar where we'll help you develop your values, your mission statement for retirement, and so much more. Again, that's free at retirewithpurpose.com. Let's go ahead and kick this off with finding out what Retire With Purpose means to Chris Smith. So this idea of retire with purpose doesn't mean retire and then I'll get purpose. It doesn't mean retire and then I'll find my purpose or retire and then I'll start living my purpose. No, retire with it means you've already had some sense of it. And so it's this continuation. And I love that that's what you guys stand for. And I love, Casey, you guys have the courage to actually have those conversations where most advisors are having conversations around like, you know, the best investment for you or the best life insurance product or the best annuity. And they're like, the focus is the product where your guys focus is like, no, let's get clear on your purpose. And then we'll, we'll find the right products that align with that. And so to me, this idea of retiring with purpose, it denotes that something that you already have, it's something you're already clear on and something you're already working towards. And so it's actually retirement. I would love it if people's retirement was just a continuation of the life and the purpose they were already living. They just maybe got to do it in a different way now and more in a bigger way because you know they have more time, but their life wasn't like, oh man, I've, I've spent 40 years just grinding away with my head down. Now I look up and it's actually kind of scary. I don't know where people are like, no, it's just a continuation into my purpose and in my life that I've already been living. Dude, Chris really gets it. He understands what retire with purpose means. I've I've had others that don't really quite get it. Chris gets it, right? Mm -hmm. It's not retire and then find purpose. It's retiring with purpose. We're helping you with that before you get there so you can live an even bigger life in retirement. Next up, we're going to spotlight Dr. Jan Freed, who was featured on the Retire With Purpose podcast, episode number 167, 167. Jan is living out her second act as a leadership developer development coach and speaker for organizations around the country. She specializes in conducting workshops for individuals that focus around being a successful leader in any setting, in retirement for that matter, in creating a vision for your life beyond work and having a successful transition into retirement. She is uh, a self-proclaimed sager, otherwise known as an expert on conscious aging, and helps people create more meaning in the lives of others through a concept that we discussed extensively on the podcast, which is why I invited her on, something called a breadcrumb legacy. So what is a breadcrumb legacy? Let's hear it from Dr. Jan Freed. We talk about legacy work, and it's the legacy part that I think has added the most value. Because most people don't think about legacy. So what I do in workshops, Casey, is I ask people, when do we leave a legacy? And people will say, well, when we leave. And I say, okay, well, what do you mean? Well, when we leave a career, when we retire, when we leave a position, when we die. Okay. And I say, okay, well, what about when we leave the earth? or when we leave the room, we leave the meeting, we leave the interaction. I'm leaving. So I created this concept called breadcrumb legacy, and I'm leaving some breadcrumbs with your audience today. Right. Okay. So they're going to be thinking something about me based on our conversation. I love that. I think it's such a great concept, this breadcrumb legacy. And we talk a lot, you know, in meetings with families like, well, do you want to do you want to leave leave some money behind? Do you want to leave a legacy? And a lot of times it's it's not so much that we're trying to leave a whole lot there when we die. We want to help along the way and help can come in many forms. It doesn't have to be monetarily. Yeah. And right now, Marshall, you just left a legacy, right? You just you just dropped something right there that's going to live on forever and it's going to impact others lives. I mean, as you're uh, driving down the road, you pick up the phone, you talk to your grandkids, you talk to your kids, you talk to your spouse, and that is part of your legacy. And I think it's just important for us to be intentional about what we're doing at every second of our lives, because that is the legacy. It's not something that you leave behind 20 or 30 years from now. You're leaving it behind right now. Mm -hmm. Up next, we're going to spotlight billionaire Dwayne Clark, uh, episode number 137, 137 of the Retire With Purpose podcast. Again, catch it at retirewithpurpose.com. Dwayne is the founder of Aegis Living, a national leader in senior assisted living and memory care, and the winner of Glassdoor's top 50 companies to work for. He's also an author, playwright, sculptor, podcaster, much more. I mean, this is the... Well-rounded dude, right? uh, He does a little bit of everything. We discussed health extensively, uh, especially because he's over 50. We talked about health over 50. That's one of what his latest books was all about, and I found it really insightful. Dwayne lives what I call the job option 
functional lifestyle and he continues to do things because he just loves doing them. And he's built his whole life around ensuring that he gives back to those that he's helped along the way. We're going to share an, a, a clip here from Dwayne where Dwayne shares with us why he believes purpose leads to longevity. I think a lot of people say, what's my greatest life? And people think, oh, you know, I'm going to have this great boat and go fishing and golfing every day. And for me, there's, a, there's an absolute corresponding statistic about what you do in your elderly years and how long you live. And so, you know, there's good studies behind this that, you know, if you, if you retire at 62 and you just go golfing, you're going to live less than the guy who has this passionate career, maybe works a little longer and gets into a philanthropic endeavor. The greatest example, that's the presidency of the United States. And we can talk about a, a study that I did with, with presidents and, you know, why Jimmy Carter is still building, you know, houses for Habitat for Humanity houses at 95. And, you know, his brother died of pancreatic, pancreatic cancer at 52. His sister died at 56. His dad died at, at 57, all of pancreatic cancer. And here he is, 95, climbing on roofs and so on. And it's, you know, it's purpose. That, that, that is the longevity elixir that we should all be drinking. We all want to go out. We want to find the fountain of youth. Well, right, what's the fountain right. of youth right in front of you? The fountain of youth is purpose. And I think a good portion of purpose comes from philanthropy or giving back. And that's something you have mm -hmm. the opportunity to do once you've achieved financial freedom. I'm reading God and Money right now, and they shared a statistic around how much longer you will live if you give versus save. Wow. And I go, boy, yeah, I just need to give more and I can live a longer life. You know, mm -hmm. be more intentional every single day about what you're leaving behind in the way of a legacy and you'll live a bigger life. We have a special offer for you when it comes to Dwayne. We partnered up with Dwayne Clark to offer his latest book, 30 Summers More, adding time back to your aging clock, free to what will listeners right now. This book is all about the science of aging and nurturing your purpose to live your best retirement. Dwayne generously sent a box of these books over to us. We're going to give them away till they're all gone. Call or text right now, 866-482-9559, 866-482-9559. Next up, we have the one and only Mitch Anthony, He's who yep. needs very little introduction. Mitch is someone that I, I've had his first book given to me when I was in high school. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's a book that I hand to all of the advisors that we onboard here as well. Mitch shares with us right here, what is the purpose of money in episode number 88? What is the point of having money? <laughs> I mean, that's a fair question. Or I can make it even simpler. What is the money for? What is the purpose of the money? That's all return on life is. So I define return on life as getting the best life possible with the money you have. Because if I ask everyone listening to this or watching this, what is the purpose of your money? What is the money for? They're going to tell me, well, it's for the people I love. It's for the places I love. It's for the things I love to do the meals I love to eat or what, you know what I mean? It's life. Money is there to support the life. Life isn't there to build a pile of money. But we've turned that upside down in our culture and we've made it all about return on investment. And it's like, oh, I got to get all the money I can. I can never have enough. And people are just killing themselves to get the money and not enjoying the money. I love that. If your net worth is your scorecard for mm -hmm. life, you got it twisted. You, know, you, you make the money to spend the money. If you look at all those different areas, right? What's the money for? It's for the people I love, the places I love, the things I love to do, the food I love to eat. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's for spending. You know, you're not just creating a pile of money so you can continue to say, ooh, look how successful I am. Look at the scorecard that's right in the top of my forehead. That's not how money works and that's not what it's all about. If you're ready for return on life, we've got a special offer for you today. We've partnered up with Mitch Anthony to offer his book, The New Retirementality, free to you right now. In this book, Mitch discusses the new reality today's pre-retirees and retirees are facing, including failed pensions, a rocky social security system, inadequate savings, and last but definitely not least, the importance of attitude and what it means to retire on purpose. Nothing could be more in line with her philosophy here at Howard Bailey. We have a 
stack of these books here. We're going to be giving them away until they're all gone. So to claim your free copy of The New Retire Mentality, contact our team by calling or texting 866-482-9559, 866-482-9559. Now for our question of the day, what percentage of Americans age 65 or older require long-term care at some point in their lives? The answer when we come back. First-time callers are eligible to receive one in-stock book per request. Limit one book per week per household up to three books per calendar year. See full terms at howardbailey.com slash terms. You're listening to Retire With Purpose, hosted by Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. This is Retire With Purpose, hosted by Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. Welcome back to Retire With Purpose, the science of retiring with confidence, the art of living with purpose. This is your host, Casey Weed. Joining me, my good friend and co-host, Marshall Johnson, to answer your question of the day. What percentage of Americans age 65 or older require long-term care at some point in their lifetime? Is that 15, 40, 55, or 70 percent? The answer is all the way up to 70 percent. Yeah, 70 percent. Now, I think there's some caveats there. I think long-term care insurance salespeople just leverage this statistic a little too hard. You know, I want to know not if I will need long-term care at some point in my Mm -hmm. life, but how many long-term care insurance policies actually pay out, right? Well, that number is closer to, I think, 50%, mm. if I remember correctly. You know, That's because a good portion of individuals that require long-term care, they won't live long enough in order to get outside of yeah, the exclusion sure. period and actually get in the money with that policy. However, that still makes it the most likely insurance coverage outside of your permanent life insurance that you're ever going to use, yeah, right? Because, yeah, right. It's, and, well, definitely the only one that you you're ever going to get to use, right? Yeah, yeah. The def- it's more likely than your car insurance, your homeowner's insurance, you know, and so much more. And so it makes sense to have some type of coverage. And this whole world of long-term care insurance, it has evolved tremendously over the last several years. I and mean, traditional long-term care insurance, it's a thing of the past. And now you're going to be evaluating hybrid policies that give you a permanent fixed premium, that allow you to leave a death benefit behind your heirs if you never use it, uh, that some have the ability that you can have your money back or a portion of your money back, maybe even money back with gains if you change your mind down the road. There are some that have unlimited long-term care benefits that will pay every single month for as long as you need the care. This is an evolving world. If you have yet to have a long-term care discussion with your advisor or with your spouse, we're here to have that discussion with you and share with you how you can fill that gap in your plan. Give us a call at 866-482-9559. We'll do an analysis for you, what those costs might look like, what the actual coverage is that you might actually need, and provide you with all of the options. You find the one that's best for you, 866-482-9559. Next up, we're going to be covering an article, another article from our Weekend Reading for Retirement email series. Uh, That's an email that goes out every single Friday. You can sign up at retirewithpurpose.com. All to stay on top of the latest trends in retirement planning, whether that's the latest in retirement income strategies, estate planning, tax planning. We want to make sure you stay on top of those latest trends so you can make better decisions in retirement. Again, sign up at retirewithpurpose.com. We're going to spotlight an article here that we also featured on the podcast. So if you want to hear a full-length discussion on this very article, go to retirewithpurpose.com check out the podcast tab. You can also get a link to the article there. This one comes to us from Market Watch. It is titled, How Much Income Will Your 401k Provide? What a great, uh, great timely topic. We've been talking a lot about retirement income lately. And uh, this article kind of dives into some newer legislation that's going to change the way that your 401k and your retirement statements actually look. Yeah, I think for a long time, you know, retirement owners, as it says here in the article, have just had you got an IRA, you got a 401k, you go, well, what's that mean, right? Uh, this is where people will come in and say, well, I don't have enough. I don't have a million dollars. I heard I need a million dollars. Or, hey, I've got $250,000. Why can't I retire? Yeah, you actually need to know how that balance converts into an income. And due to some changes in the SECURE Act and you know the Labor Department's final rule coming out, uh, they are now going to do something different on your 401k statements. So by 
by third quarter, possibly third quarter later this year, you're going to see something different on your 401k statements because your plan sponsor could be Fidelity or Vanguard uh, or any of the other 401k providers out there. All of those sponsors are going to be required to include two lifetime income illustrations on your retirement account. So your 401ks will now show a guaranteed income number on those statements in today's dollars, either as a single lifetime annuity or a joint and survivor annuity. So today, how much income will your 401k guarantee? It's going to convert that into what that number would be if you annuitize the balance. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's a helpful uh, discussion, right? Because people have always had a hard time kind of translating the balance of their 401k to what it may produce in income. Um, so that's that's going to help answer that looming question, you know, help people understand how much income can be generated, because that's what that's what retirement planning is all about is the income. Yeah. And I think Drew Carrington's quote in here really uh, emphasizes that he is the senior vice president and head of institutional defined contribution at Franklin Templeton Investments. And his quote ends with anything that helps start the process of getting people to think about the retirement accounts as retirement accounts is a positive step. And you go, what, what do you mean by retirement that? Retirement accounts <laughs> as retirement accounts. Because huh? what is a retirement account to so many? Uh, it's a scorecard for your net worth. It's, it's an emergency fund. It's your long-term accumulation dollars. It's your estate plan, your death benefit, right? You, you see, and many see this, this account, your 401k, you see it as this one thing that's supposed to solve all of your needs. It's there for emergencies. It's there for income. It's there for flexibility. It's there for long-term growth like and the inflation protection and long-term the care, all, right? right? It's supposed to solve everything. And that's not how it was designed. I mean, your 401k was designed to provide retirement income in the future. Future. Previous generations didn't have that issue because they had a defined benefit plan. They had a pension plan and they got a statement on a regular basis. It showed them how much income they would get if they continued to work in that role at their current job for an right. extended period of time. They were always thinking income, always thinking income. There was a Harvard Business Review article done by Harvard not long ago that shared this is the biggest risk that retirees are facing today is this mind shift that they're going to have to make from those accumulation years to those income years where now they have to think and invest their 401k differently because it's no longer about growth and accumulation at all costs. Now it needs to be converted to a stable income and that requires a different strategy and a different way of thinking. And it requires a different set of education too. I mean, part of the reason why we do this show and the podcast and why it's downloaded so much every month is because people want to learn more because this can be confusing. Now, to be fair, everybody's always had the ability to figure out how much income, you know, just using the old 4% withdrawal rule as this article goes on to state, it's like, okay, take your balance divided by 4%. But that requires a little bit of math. And, you know, that's not a perfect indicator as we talked about recently on the show. And I think there's a lot of problems with this. I mean, there's a lot of good. And I think the biggest mm -hmm. good that's going to come out of this legislation is now you're going to see on your 401k statements how much income is going to be produced. I think the value is that in starting to think about your 401k balance as an income as stream income. rather than just yeah. a balance that's sitting there in a sheet of paper. You need to know how much that's going to be in income. So it's shifting our thinking from just accumulation. Now it's shifting it over to income. But there are some significant issues, I think, with this at the same time. One, it can be very discouraging because you look at that number. It's looking at it at a point in time. It's not projecting it it forward like your pension projections do. Your pension projections, your social right, security right, projections, right, right. they project forward how much income is going to be produced down the road at retirement age. This is only going to be looking at your balance at a set point in time and how much it would produce right now. Yeah, it's a static number. It's not taking into account future growth, earnings growth, or future contributions. And it's not taking into consideration other income streams. You might look at a $100,000 balance, go, oh, great, I can get $600 a month. Mm -hmm. I can't retire. But you need to factor in your social security. You need to factor in maybe dividend income you have, maybe some rental income that you have. You need to make sure you're taking in consideration all those different income streams and stacking those on top of each other and looking at the net here. Yeah, you might see on your statement that you're going to be able to turn that into $5,000 a month. And you go, oh, man, I spend around $4,000 a month right now. I'll have a nice little $1,000 buffer there when I step into mm -hmm. retirement. However, a good $1,000 of that, this if not more, is most likely yeah. going over to Uncle Sam. So you want 
won't have that buffer that you thought you had. Well, and it's still proposed right now. So the article goes on to say that we're not really sure how this calculation is being being figured. I mean, in this article, they show an example where you've got a current account balance of 125000 Based upon a single life, this person at 67 will be able to create $645 a month. But if, if they want something that's for them and their spouse or joint income, it would drop to $533 a month. Those numbers are about a 6% to 5% income stream, but you may be able to do better than that on yeah, the open market. In different right? ways. I mean, one, you, I mean, who, nobody should annuitize all of their retirement accounts, yeah. right? You don't just take your entire 401k balance and, and put it, it into an annuity yeah. and lose control over it because you give up all flexibility, you give up all growth, right? Nobody does that. And it's not a good decision. You should never have all of your money in a single product and it acts like that's what you would do. You wouldn't actually do that for one. You're probably going to take on some risk. If you take on some risk, then you should be able to generate more income than what's shown sure. on that statement. Mm -hmm. And you may need to take on risk in order to meet your goals. Maybe you don't actually have to work as long as you think you do when you look at that statement. And as Marshall said, you know, on the private market, you can today, I mean, I ran the same numbers here. You can get more than what the joint income projection is going to be on your statement. You can get about the same, maybe a little less than the single life income that's going to be showing up on your statement. If you can get roughly the same amount of income and not give up control right. of those dollars on a guaranteed basis, you could do that through a fixed index annuity, a guaranteed income annuity with an income writer. You could accomplish that while still retaining your balance, the flexibility of being able to take excess withdrawals, the flexibility to be able to change that to a different company, a different type of annuity as interest rates rise. You have flexibility if you go to the private market, and that isn't something you would get if you went through your 401k provider. Yeah. And so, of course, I think this is this is good on the surface. It's for illustrative purposes. They're not going to guarantee these numbers, but it can lead some to uh, be uh, rather dejected when they see that number. And for others, they may have a false sense of security. So we just have to be careful. Here. And it's just this conundrum, right? You're, well, you're focusing too much on accumulation. You need to focus on income, but income's not everything, right? You might yeah, have... Some people may not need that income at 67. Or maybe you have $5,000 a month in income. Income, and that's all the income you need in order to sustain your lifestyle today. However, what about inflation risks? What about other needs and risk? What about emergency funds? What about long-term care risk, covering your health care expenses? All of those things need to be taken into consideration with the help of a comprehensive financial plan, which is why we're here and offering you a complimentary financial review today to integrate that 401k into a true retirement strategy that covers all of your bases from tax planning to health care planning uh, to planning for that income, again, to last the rest of your life. In short, we're here to take the guesswork out of financial planning for you. It can take just 30 minutes, so give us a call right now at 866-482-9559. You can also Text that number, 866-482-9559. A comprehensive financial review at no obligation, 866-482-9559. We'll be right back here next week with you on Retire With Purpose. You've been listening to Retire With Purpose, hosted by Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. Investment advisory services offered through Howard Bailey Securities, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Working with Howard Bailey Securities, LLC, cannot guarantee investment success or that specific financial goals will be achieved. Certified Financial Planner Board of Standards, Inc. owns the certification Mark CFP and Certified Financial Planner in the U.S., which it awards to individuals who successfully complete CFP Board's initial and ongoing certification requirements. Howard Bailey Financial is a registered trademark of Howard Bailey Financial. All rights reserved. Information is not intended to provide specific legal or tax advice. Howard Bailey Financial nor its advisors are qualified to give tax or legal advice. You are encouraged to consult with your tax or legal professional for guidance on your individual situation. This radio show is a paid placement.